And the last thing I'm going to talk about inside of your routes is you can use signed routes. So what are signed routes, Andres? Basically, many applications regularly send notifications, sort of like uh, you're resetting a password, you're accepting an invitation, or maybe you're sending some kind of file. And basically, you want to make a URL a little bit more secure. You have three ways to do it. You can make the URL public and hope that nobody else accesses this URL except for that specific user you're sending an email to. You can put the action behind authentication, but then the user has to log in and maybe you that's not exactly what you're trying to do. Or you can sign the link to a uniquely, you can sign it to something unique basically. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you something like like this so you're gonna have your url and then at the end it's gonna have a query parameter and it's gonna have a signature and the signature is gonna be some kind of unique string right here and what this signature is gonna guarantee what this signature does is it guarantees that your user is getting a unique link and nobody else is gonna be able to use this link for their purpose and to change stuff from your from another user inside of your application this is really neat because it allows you to give more security out of the box and you can send those reset links, uh, reset password links or invitations without, without worrying that something's gonna happen. And the way you can do that is instead of, instead of just doing a regular route right here, you can do something like uh, URL sign route. sign route and then you you will pass this post and then from the post you can pass whatever the post ID is so you can say post ID equals one and right here it's gonna generate a link to this post but with the signature so that way you know it's unique whatever they're they're getting you know whatever your user is getting is going to be unique from your controller and I'm gonna put this back in the controller this you will add to like the template or the controller wherever you're trying to use it but from your route you're actually gonna do something like say this is the this right here is the post ID that we're trying to target and we can do something like middleware and then we're going to use the signed middleware that way it knows that this is going to get a signed url make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you leave a comment whatever interests uh, you have or if you have any kind of comment about the video and if you want to know more about Laravel in general I get a lot of the information that I'm giving you obviously from the experience I have but also from a book written by Matt Stauffer so he is amazing and he wrote a book uh, published by O'Reilly called Laravel Up and Running and I'm going to leave a link for that book down here in the comments so that you can get it and I really recommend if you're serious about going into Laravel, I really recommend you get this book because it has a ton of information that even I didn't know at all. And I've been working on this for, a, for like I said before, six years. And honestly, it's really, really, really powerful what this book can do for you and all the knowledge that it has. And for today, I'm going to leave it at that because that's quite a, a lot of information that I'm already dumping on you. And I don't want you to get bored if you didn't already. But basically, uh, this right here, it's how the routing works. I'm going to get more into the controllers on the next episode next week and how that works. And maybe the views if we have enough time for that. But basically know that you have all your verbs in Laravel. So you can use all your verbs right here like this. And just to give you a quick of a preview that of what we're going to be able to do next week is instead of using all of this because as you see it can get pretty overwhelming pretty quick and especially if you have a ton of resources that you're trying to uh, have for your application instead of having all of that we can replace that by just saying resource and then posts and then whatever the controller it is so if we're using the post controller we can just do something like this where 
Laravel knows that all of these methods are going to be inside of the post controller and you can actually generate that using a PHP artisan command. So I can do something like PHP artisan make controller and I can pass in a few options. So let me see exactly what options we have. So we can pass in if we want to create a model. I'm going to do that. I want M. I want this to be a resource. So right here, resource. And I mean something else. No, that should be it. So if I run this, I'm gonna get a con uh, a controller that has actually yeah I'm missing the the name right here. So the way you use it is you pass the options and then you do the name and then I can do something like posts. So now if I go back over here, I'm gonna have a post controller right here. And actually I should have done post controller. There you go. So I can remove this one. But as you see, this right here is gonna give me a post controller with a resource already created inside of the controller so you don't need to create this over and over it does it for you so use artisan as much as you as you can honestly so it generated this post controller and if i go over into the models actually it did not generate the model yeah but i can do the same as far as that goes so i can just do php make model and then i'm going to generate posts actually should be singular but I can just change it right here refactor rename there you go so now I have a post model and we're gonna be adding this once I start building the blog and this right here is a post controller that connects to that model and as you see it's a resource already so if I go back into the web that PHP file I can just do this and all of this I can skip. So I don't really need to use any of this. This was to show you the example, but basically that right there, that little, that single line of code replaces all of that, like 20 lines of code. And I really recommend you do it like this. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. I really wish you a great week and I will see you on the next week when we're going to be talking more about controllers and routes for Laravel. Have a great week once again and I wish you the best.